Assalamu alaikum ya Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa alaikum How to distinguish if a problem is from Allah or from anyone's nazar or by shaitan as I am constantly always in some kind of problem or the other mm, How to distinguish if a problem is from Allah from nafs or from shaitan don't have to distinguish that <laughs> any type of difficulty that's coming then we have to increase our worshipness, increase our, our practices, our madad because either way Allah doesn't change a condition which would be all encompassing of a person, of a people until they change what was within themselves. So whether it's from shaitan, from nafs or Divinely punishment or decree, it's all the same is that Allah is not going to change any conditions until people change themselves. So it means maybe the condition warrants more salawats, more of the awrad, the, the, the awrads during fajr, the meditation, the tafakkur, contemplation, the sadaqah, zakat, everything, the khidmat and service, everything. So when people are doing everything then alhamdulillah then they don't face those types of difficulties. They face just imtahan, testing, 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 testing in every aspect. Allah tests their patience, Allah tests their perseverance, Allah tests their everything. Tariqah is not something easy in which Allah just sends you, you know, divinely hugs and kisses. It's a continuous test in one's life. We were talking the other day with the people about Abu Hassan al-Askari of the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam siru that a great Naqshbandi shaykh from the Khurasan areas of Iran and Abu Hassan al-Askari was so pious and imagine in these times that the sultans which are Muslim kings were trying to kill them. Because they, they weren't necessarily pious, they were beginning to want to drink and womenize and do every type of uh, evilness. And now here are tariqa awliyas talking about heavenly realities and forget about other people not liking them, the sultanats are not liking them. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And as a result, continuously trying to torment them, arrest them. And on one occasion, they killed his son and they put the head of the son on the stick in the front of his zawiyah. And he came to his zawiyah, so the head went inside and continued with the khatm khawjigan. So if anyone thought that the tariqah was easy and the whole heavens were going to come and greet you and shake your hand and say, congratulations, you know, it's not like that. That uh, from every direction people are going to come against because you remind them of a reality. So they come from every direction making a hijrah to you to see what you're doing and what makes you so successful, like a hajj for them. Allah may be inspiring them to come and, and make a hajj to take the barakah and tabarak of what's happening in the area. But they think they're coming to conquer, they came to Prophet to attack. As soon as they saw Prophet they accepted. So people may think and have their own intention but Allah has maybe a different intention. But tariqah is based on that, tariqah is based on a life of testing and difficulty. Then Allah wants to see how do you persevere through difficulty. 
But that's a sultan and awliya, so anyone who thinks they're sultan and awliya and they go around thinking they're sultan and awliya, mm, then they're going to have testing like that. So our way was always an abdul ajiz, da'if miskinu zalim. I am none of those titles, Ya Rabbi of any big thing, I already admitted to you I'm nothing, I'm zalim jahal. So I, I don't need anybody to put my children's head on sticks just to see if I'm going to be broken or not broken. We took a path of humility to be nothing. Others whom think they are huge then they have to deal with the consequences of those big titles. But for those of us who have no titles and just keep our head low to the ground and teach the way of khair. You know the, the rule for the messengers was to teach about punishment, that you don't listen to me you're going to get punished. Sirat al-Khayr or Sirat al-Rahmah is the only law after Prophet that ulama have no permission to teach and tell people they're going to be punished. Their, their only way is for rahmah because we're not here to act like messengers and say, you saved, you punished. No, or the way of rahmah and the way that all awliya have to adhere and stay to that rule is teach people of mercy, give them hope and love in a world that is even more hopeless and loveless. So this is the, the rule in which has to govern us is to give people good news, good tidings, glad tidings, make them to feel they have hope and good. What's the greatest hope is the love for Prophet and meditate, contemplate, open these doors, open these realities. Imagine the portals and, and divine blessings that are going to come to servants. So it's not a way in which to tell people they're going to go to hell and that this one going to hell and that one going to hell. So no, this is a very specific rule that has to be uh, enforced and the ulama are responsible for adhering and keeping to that way, that keep the way of rahmah and teach people about rahmah and mercy so that they can reach to Allah's rahmah because already the world is telling them to give up. So imagine you make somebody to feel like they want to give up, oh I'm, I'm going to quit the whole thing, I'm going to quit everything. No oh, bravo, what you did now? You, you joined in with shaitan to make people go jahannam? For what? There's already enough of those, there's only a few people now trying to encourage people, stay in the light, stay in the light. And even if it's wrong, stay in the light, stay in the light. What Allah going to do? He's going to be upset with the servant who gave too much hope to people? Oh, maybe Allah will judge us by that same mercy. That every servant I sent to them, you told them they're going to paradise. Why you did that? Why are you so… you were so kind? I'm going to send you to hell. No, <laughs> Allah did do that. It doesn't even make logical sense. But Allah said, amazing, everyone I sent to you, you told them they're going to paradise, that breathe, do these good things, do all of these things, ah, inshaAllah then I send you to paradise too. So we said our, our way is to encourage people towards goodness inshaAllah and maybe people are inspired now to come and see what, what's happening there. There seems to be a lot of goodness emanating from Vancouver. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi we are aware of the big character flaws within ourselves but what are the signs or how to come to know the small character flaws within us? Ask people around you, <laughs> they're going to be the most honest. <laughs> yeah, ask the people who know you closely, what are my flaws and let them be honest with you if, if that's what you want to know. Most people know their flaws of uh, arrogance and anger and, and uh, bad character and uh, you can generalize and summarize, uh, most likely it has to do with anger, most likely it has to do with bad character, impatience. And if you want more specifics ask the people who know you from your family and relatives, I'm sure they'll be truthfully honest with you. If you need that, if you need that much detail because you've worked on everything already 
then okay you can go to specifics. But in a general rule people don't need the details because they even didn't get the specifics. So the specifics like the big are anger. The, can you control anger, do your salawats, do your muraqabah, do all of your, your connections and to safeguard against anger and pride. And when these characteristics come trying to control it, try to keep your wudu, try to keep your practices, so alhamdulillah it's much much harder than being said. So uh, I don't know how, why would somebody need to go to very specific characteristics unless they already overcame the grand ones. If you already came overcame anger and pride then very specific ones, yeah. You go and ask uh, people who know you what specifically irritates you about myself, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa How can a mother of young children continue with tariqah as I don't get enough time to do my practices and daily awrad, please forgive my ignorance. Yeah, no problem. You know if you have your children that in itself it's its own worshipness but I would go back and try to look at time management. That if you put on a piece of paper and manage your time, like they teach you at work or in businesses that you make a schedule and it says morning all the times all the way till like 8 p.m. at night. Write every block of time to the 15th minute and 30 minute time frame. You're telling me from the time you woke up to the time you went to bed you didn't have half an hour to sit and do zikr and do your salawats and then another place you didn't have another half an hour to do the second parts of the salawat or the zikrs. It's impossible, nobody's that busy unless you're actually running the school and you're surrounded by children all day and night. So. I think most of it is time management and people try to look for an excuse not to, not to do things because somebody's saying it's, uh, I'm a single mother with children, other people saying I'm a grown man at work. It doesn't make no difference, everybody has a task to do. Whether you run your family or run your career or, or run both of them, look at the time on a time schedule and say, oh I'm on the bus for example going to work. You can do the first part of your awrad on the way going to work, you can do the second part on the way driving or coming back from work and you split it up based on time management. So I would think it's more a time management issue, you know after 30, 35 years of doing this we haven't, haven't found anyone with the schedule so busy that they can't set aside an hour or half an hour for Allah Azawajal. As Salaamu Alaikum respected Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi what can we do to get more barakah in rizq? What are we doing now to get barakah in our lives? So that, that becomes what's the source of barakah in our lives? That we do the khidmat, we give the charity, we sending out the links, sending out articles. We attend the zikrs, we make the comments, we do all of the service in our life has an immense source of barakah for us. From the rizq that Allah's sending us, how much of it are you plowing back? So let's do common sense. Imagine we were all farmers, doesn't matter you're a big time billionaire banker, we, let's reduce ourselves to farmers. If I have 10 seeds and I plant 10 seeds. If all my life whatever I planted I ate them, after a couple seasons I would have no seeds because I put 10 seeds in the ground then 10 fruits came and I ate them. Then what happened? Now I have less seeds to plant for the next season and I ate those too. Then I have next less seeds to plant for the next season. So the problem is that people eat their principle. Everything that Allah gave to them they eat it out of fear because shaitan comes and says, oh, it's not going to last, it's not going to last. Who sent it to you in the first place? The one who sent it to you will always send it to you. And what Allah gave to us through Prophet is a means of provision. That how to bless your provision is that from whatever Allah sent you 
give back to Allah. Give at least 10, 15, 20 percent of what Allah gave to you back in the way for Allah by feeding people, by giving charity, by giving zakat. Imagine that with that paycheck of yours you're feeding orphans, repairing the orphanage, making wells, putting water. How much barakah came from that percent versus the percent that you took home, you ate, you paid your car, you paid your house, you paid your children, you paid your food, you paid your electricity. That okay but imagine then from the barakah of what you gave how much Allah now expands that provision because He's very happy with that. Oh you look at all these the smiling faces and all these happy places that you're, you're making to be illuminated with these blessings. Allah now says, you're a good custodian of the Divinely wealth. Then it begins to send you in ways you never imagined and all our students were doing again 30 years this, students are saying, Shaykh I got a raise out of nowhere, I got a bonus from this job out of nowhere, I got this the relative sent this out of nowhere, it's not out of nowhere, it's from Allah Knowing that when He gives to you, you always take your percentage and give back in the way of Allah and if you don't and your means is so tight, you say, Ya Rabbi the actual amount I can give is so tight, I'm going to give my time and I'm going to go now and, and feed people, volunteer with the, the groups that are feeding people. I mean there's so many ways to give back but it's just a matter of overcoming fear and unlocking your hand. And again we know we live the system, we live the system which if you conquer fear and realize as much as you throw back of these seeds out for, for Allah's way, your garden blooms beyond imagination, beyond imagination of how much Allah will send to a servant. And from ways they could never have imagined how that came, right? They do business plan all of a sudden Allah introduces them to all the right people. And they were wondering, how, how, how's something going to open for me? And but one second I'll introduce them to one person, that one person said, come I'm going to now teach you everything about this business and we get these emails all day long that Allah has miraculous ways. It's just a matter of people not having fear. Open your hand and what you give back in Allah's way is never wasted. And one grain of corn makes 700 grains, from one grain Allah plants it. 700 grain will come back. So Allah is in the business of multiplying rizq, multiplying sustenance. But people are in the business of fear because shaitan listens to them. The shaitan talks to them and they listen to shaitan. So alhamdulillah the way of Rahman and the way of heavens is have no fear in Allah's way inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Please forgive my bad adab, I want to be a good zero as a woman. How to advise my husband if he is wrong and tell him you are wrong without being a one and stay nothing? InshaAllah you have to work on that. The, the, in the hikmah of tariqah is how the shaykh talks to people without directly addressing anyone's name. So the, the system is always going to be in an in a indirect way of teaching that this is the way, this is the, the lesson, this is the understanding. And it's enough if they can listen to our teachings they get the understanding and they'll get the guidance. Everyone gets the guidance they need by just listening and that's how the system works. It's not only you understood it. But anybody who listens, inshaAllah if their heart is open, Allah guides them to the reality and to the understanding they need, inshaAllah. But in, in these cases of, of men and women then in a world in which the predominant energy to make female masculine and to make men emasculated with no energy, no, no rights is very dangerous. So we try to keep our men to be like men, look like men, act like men. And that for the woman to train herself on how to act like a, a woman 
and be feminine and stay out of the man's business of governing and ruling and uh, being the imam and encourage the man to watch the videos and follow the shaykh. InshaAllah Allah inspire within their hearts to learn and to watch the shaykh because even within family we said between parents and children, if a parent is not in tariqah the natural state of a parent would be to be jealous of what the child knows more than the family. So even if the child is being illuminated with knowledges the par parental role won't acknowledge that. We'll still think, no we don't know anything, I know the religion, you don't know anything. Because that's the way Allah made it, didn't make parents to subordinate to children and say, oh wow this is amazing you know all these things, so teach me, teach me. So because of that then you're taught then just be quiet, be humble and take your teaching and understanding to yourself and to your heart. And if Allah wants to guide them, He will guide them to watch and to learn and when they learn you don't want to compete with them. See, you see I told you this is like this, this is like this so you have to then have the adab in which to stay quiet and let their learning process to begin to understand and they start to say, oh yeah the shaykh is teaching like this, we should do like this and say, yeah okay inshaAllah you're right that's good. So it's a very complex way and mannerism with humanity. And people whom can try to learn that system and adhere to the system they should avoid familiar or family conflicts. It's difficult for a man to, to lead the family and continuously trying to be outgoverned by, by the spouse. Then it becomes again back into that situation where we're not looking for co-pilots, where we're looking for a rib, somebody made from us not somebody to be sharik with us. And that's not the role in which Allah wanted and those don't really work, those are western philosophies and look where it got the philosophies, you know. That's why they're, they're now they don't know how they want to dress when they go to target, you know. That's the system that opened for them, this is the, what they wanted to propagate to the whole world and they wanted you know those same stores to be like that in Afghanistan and in, in every part of the world and that's the, that was their intention. So. It's not working, it's not working for them, it's not working for anyone. So the way of the heavens is what Allah wants and that way has the most amount of blessings, most amount and Im immense amount of blessings. And we describe that in the, the nukht and the zero. If the person truly takes the power of a nukht they can be like awliya. Best example of a nukht in a family is a child. Why didn't Allah give a mouth to the child? Every any child could have come at nine months old and start screaming to you, I'm hungry, screaming like on the top of their lung, hungry and screaming for the, <laughs> the diaper, diaper need to be clean. Why Allah didn't give this tongue to a child? But yet the scream of the child, each screaming is different and the mother begins to fine tune to understand this scream is for food, this scream is from pain. This scream is from cleaning. Why? Because that child is a symbol of a nukht. It doesn't need a voice, it can send a signal and energy out to the Divinely Presence. Everyone in the room will now say, pick that child up, something's wrong. You don't have to you say it in any audible language. So Allah gives to us a sign of a nukht because the child just came from paradise, it was walking in paradise. It just was in the Divinely Presence when it comes onto this earth. So there Allah has signs everywhere if people understand but we become bigger, we become tougher and we say, no that won't happen anymore. And it can happen, the person who remains to be a nuqt begins to pray, Allah changes everything in the house. Allah inspires that, that person in the house the information that they need to know, why? Because there's a nuqt in that house praying for them, that's enough, that's faith. But when the nuqh says, no, now I have to actually say something, then you left the power of being a nuqh and relying upon Allah and it generally doesn't work out well when you leave that station and you enter into egoism and now the two egos are going to begin to battle. So this is a deep reality if people have the patience to reach to it but if not then you know everyone's free to do what works for them, inshaAllah.
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam Does ignoring the inspirations block the connection while trying to connect? Ignoring the inspirations block the connection? Not acting upon the inspirations it depending what we feel the inspiration is. So first they're inspired we have to see if it's a nafsani inspiration or ruhani. Nafsani is that you're inspired to deal with other people. I'm now going to tell this person this and that person that, that's all from the nafs. Ruhani is I'm inspired to read more, pray more, do more, give more. Those are very difficult against the nafs and those are the true inspirations. Those if you ignore them they become less and less. When you're inspired to do and you don't do it you're trying to shut that inspiration off. If you don't react to those inspirations you become more subtle if you react to them. You don't want to become hardened in which you don't listen to them anymore. So the one whom listens to the inspiration their heart is feeling, I have to do something today in the way of Allah they do it. Then I feel like I have to do it and, and then they do it. As a result their heart becomes very subtle to the heavenly frequency which comes like a very subtle angelic frequency. The nasani is like somebody hitting the trombone, it's very loud, very disruptive, they're gonna go out and you know bother somebody that the, they feel they have to tell somebody something, this is from the nafs and it comes in very heavy and strong. So those the more we can ignore and diminish their strength becomes lowered. The more we listen to the Divine inspiration the more they become inspired until they become a very strong foundation of faith because Allah believes, Allah is giving to the servant that they believe and belief is something that you act upon. When you act upon your belief it becomes yaqeen and certain inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Barakah Shaykh Ali Rasul Kareem, inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah bi niyati khatmi khawjikan. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.